Okay, guys. Now, requirement two. What does it say? Given their beliefs, the player's strategies must be sequentially rational. All right, so the requirement two imposes an idea of sequential rationality. But what does it really mean? That is, at each information set, the action taken by the player with the move, for example, in this info set, it's second player because she has the move, and the player's subsequent strategy must be, meaning the continuation strategy. I mean, here, the, there's no continuation strategy because after the second player's action, the game will be over. Must be optimal given the player's belief. So it must optimal given conditional on two things. One, the player's belief, the second player's belief, I mean, mu, and... And so the, her belief at that info set and the other players' subsequent strategies. So once again, here in this particular example, there is no other players and, and other strategies. So it's just uh, the strategy, the action of player two here must be optimal, payoff maximizing, given her belief. All right. So here the subsequent strategy means what? Continuation strategy, continuation strategy. Uh, we already defined this when we talked about subgame perfection, so please go back to those videos. But the subsequent strategy or continuation strategy means a complete plan of action covering every contingency, whether those info sets are reached or not, that might arise after the given information set has been reached, okay? Meaning, uh, so for example, in this game, a subsequent, so a subsequent strategy following this decision note is basically what player one will do and what player two will do, all right? However, in this game, again, uh, the subsequent strategy following the information set of player two is, you know, what player two does. That's it, because that's the end of the game, all right? Um, so, the requirement two is sequential rationality. Once again, each after each information set, player, player's actions, strategies, continuation strategies must be optimal given their beliefs and given other players' strategies. All right. So basically, remember the subgame perfection idea was at every subgame. Uh, the strategies chosen by the players must be optimal, meaning Nash equilibrium. So here we do not have subgames, right? But what we can do, we can look at information set and all the branches that follows that information set and then say the player who moves at that info set must be in fact best responding given the other player's strategies, but that is not enough also given his belief about what decision note he has or she has. Okay, so that's very important. Why others' strategies is not sufficient? Because the other strategies only... Uh, so the others' strategies are going to give you different options, different outcomes, depending on which decision note you are at. So therefore, at some information set, if you would like, because in the info set there are two decision nodes, there's going to be at least two potential outcomes if you follow uh, your opponent's, uh, if you're trying to best respond to your opponent's strategies, right? You're, that's, that's very important. Again, in a non-singleton information set, because there are at least two decision nodes, if you just try to best respond to your opponent's strategy, that means there are you're going to be facing two potential uh, outcome. One potential outcome uh, is is due to the fact that you might be in uh, in the in, in decision note say number one, and another uh, outcome because you might be in fact in decision note number two. So the question is. Uh, your real payoff, your actual payoff, depends not only on your opponent's strategy, but also on your belief, all right? So therefore, you must best respond to these two. So that's what sequential rationality is. Uh, let me try to clarify it, hopefully, with some examples uh, in this specific example. 
let's pick some strategy profile. Uh, player one plays right, player two uh, plays uh, U, and then the belief system is mu equals one half. Okay? Question is, does this strategy profile and belief system satisfy requirement two? All right, well, remember requirement two basically says at info set, player two should be best responding. Well, here, uh, his opponent's strategy is irrelevant because there's no one else moving after player two. So therefore, player two should be best responding her beliefs. What is her belief? Mu is equal to one half, meaning she believes that she's here or here with equal probabilities. If this is the case, her expected utility, right, her expected payoff of playing U is what? Well, if she plays U, she's going to get payoff 1 with probability mu and payoff 2 with probability 1 minus mu, right? Because if she is here, uh, this is what her payoff will be. If she is here, this is what she will uh, have. And she believes that she may actually be here or here with equal probabilities. So mu is equal to one half. So that means this is in fact equal to uh, three over two. All right. Well, what is her expected utility if she plays D instead? We are checking if U is optimal or not. So if she is playing D instead, she's going to get either zero or one. So zero times mu probability, one times one minus mu probability, which is one half. As you can see, three over two is greater than one half. So that means u is in fact optimal. u is optimal given uh, mu equals one half. So therefore, the requirement two is satisfied for player two. Well, what about player one, right? This is his info set. Question is, is he choosing his action optimally given his opponent's strategy and the belief system? Hmm. What does that mean? His opponent is playing you, right? And so if he plays R, his payoff is going to be one. All right, so uh, let me write it someone somewhere here so the expected utility or expect but again we don't really calculate expected pearl for player one uh, because he's not facing any uncertainty here uh, anyway let me just write expected payoff if he sorry if he plays r by the way i ignore the other's strategy but obviously this payoff depends on the u and this belief all right so i just ignore it uh I just abuse the notation for simplicity. So expected payoff of playing R is one. Expected payoff of playing uh, L is, if you play L, remember your opponent, you believe at least that your opponent is gonna play U, it's gonna be two. Expected payoff of playing uh, uh, M is gonna give you zero, oops, zero. So therefore, R is not optimal. Uh, given uh, u and mu equals one half. So remember, sequential rationality or requirement two holds not only for information, I mean, non-singleton information set, it must hold for every information set. So it did hold for this, but it didn't hold here. So therefore, this strategy profile uh, and the belief system, it does satisfy requirement one. Yes, there's a belief here. So requirement one is sort of so easy, but it fails to hold requirement two because player one is not uh, uh, optimizing his strategy. All right, so it fails to hold requirement two. I hope that is clear. Let me pick another example for exactly the same game, all right? Obviously, what I'm gonna do is just change the, uh, uh, the, 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 the strategies and the belief system. So here, uh, I am just picking L and then U 
and then mu equals zero. Okay, so here um, player one is playing left, player two is playing u, and then he believes that mu is equal to zero. All right, so the first question is u optimal for player two? Huh. Well, I wish I, I, we were, you know, we were doing this face to face and I had the opportunity to ask this question to you. But if you like, pause for a minute and think about it. Think about this requirement too and try to answer. Well, you will probably say, yes, it is optimal. All right. Um, well, for this game, unfortunately, it is optimal. Um, but let me, I will come back to this very example, but let me change the payoffs here and try to answer exactly the same question again. Is U optimal for player two? Well, you will probably, or some of you will say, yes, it is still optimal because player one is playing left, player two is playing U, and he's getting one. Instead, if she had played D, she would get zero. So one is higher than zero, so therefore it is optimal for her to play U. All right, if that was your thinking, you are misapplying this requirement too. Because this requirement too, again, let's read it. Given their beliefs, the player's strategies must be sequentially rational, meaning at each info set, the action taken by the player with the move, player two, and the player's subsequent strategy must be optimal given the player's belief at that info set and the other player's subsequent strategies. So it says, you must be optimal given mu and the subsequent strategies. It doesn't say you must be optimal to L because this is L is not a subsequent strategy. It's a right. I mean, L is played before reaching to this information set. So in, in all those, you know, pictures, here, what player two, therefore, in this idea of sequential rationality, what player two will care is his or her belief. She doesn't care about the actual action. She only cares because she doesn't know, right? I mean, in this game, she obviously cannot observe uh, the player one's move, but she's holding a belief, mu equals zero. So is she best responding this belief? Well, what does mu equals zero means? Well, mu equals zero means she thinks she is in fact at this decision node. Well, she's holding a wrong belief. Fine. Well, if she believes that this is the decision node she's at, u is going to bring her one payoff, d is going to bring her two payoff, and clearly, therefore, u is not optimal. All right? So u is not optimal for player two, given mu equals zero, obviously. Okay, so that's very, very important. Well, given, well, then do we satisfy requirements two? Do I need to look at player one's uh, strategy? No, I mean, if one player fails to satisfy requirements two, well, you don't really need to look at the other players because that means this strategy profile cannot be a perfect Bayesian equilibrium because remember requirement one, two, three, four, uh, which we haven't learned yet, but they all must be satisfied for all players, right? So here, uh, this requirement doesn't hold for one player. That means it doesn't hold and therefore it cannot be perfect Bayesian equilibrium. So you don't really have to worry about player one's moves. But I hope that example was clear. It's like sequential rationality doesn't uh, look at what players played before. What you should be uh, best responding is your belief and what's going to happen afterwards. Okay?